Okay guys, so in this video we have implemented support for pagination, so have, let's have a look at that. So pagination, as you can see now there's a slight change to our application layout where we've added this top navigation bar here. Now in Google Mail's real implementation, or rather the real application, you'll see that there's quite a few things here, but since this is a minimalistic approach to things. We just want to support pagination, but we still want to be consistent with the layout. So we've simply added this section over here where you can now click and actually move between like the different subsets. And if you keep on clicking, you can't actually go out of bounds. And you can of course do this for each of the pages where, you know, it's dynamically checking how many emails we have per category and which index we are on basically. So for spam, for example, we can go here and like just click through and that's basically how it works. So let's have a look at how this is actually implemented. Let's go to the actual code here. So first and foremost, we'll have a look at what's happened on the server. And let's actually go there. So the way that pagination, or rather there's a few th ways that you can implement pagination. This is the approach that I've found to be the most flexible. So basically what we do is that we check when we have like just a listing function of some sort where we're going to show a list of something. We check our query for an offset and limit parameter. And if there is an offset, we simply try to parse it or we parse these two ints and then we do min max on the limit because we want to set an upper bound for how many emails the client can request from us because if you were to let's say be a hacker or some malicious user you might say that all oh, right i want a limit that is indefinite or like i want the maximum limit or something like that and we just want to be sure that we can't really you know we, we want to put a little bit of protection just so we can just request as much as we want so Apart from that, basically all we've done is to add these like offset and limit parameters and these will make sh make sense in just a moment. Let's actually look at the diff again so it's easier for us to see what's actually changed. Yeah, and this thing has also been added. So basically we have this endpoint called count now where we've added a count emails method to the email service where we simply specify an email type in our query and we pass that into the service and it's going to return a like just a count. And the rest of this is pretty much the same where we simply set an offset and a limit and we query based on that. So let's have a look at count emails. Let's actually go to the five for this. So count emails, basically what we want to do here is that we are passing in an email type and then we simply count which category of email we want because in order for us to be able to show this total, we need to be able to first and foremost for each page we navigate to go to the server and we need to just query or say, hey, from the important Im important emails category, give me all of the, like the count, the total amount of emails we have. And that's basically what this does for us. So we have these different sections where we have sent, draft, spam, and all we really do is count how many we have so we can know the total. Okay. And then of course down here we'll have a small just this one example look of the offset and the limit. So for example, if we wanted that this is the exact same thing for all of these listing functions, so we can just look at one of them. So say get spam emails here, we have an offset and a limit, and all we're gonna do is that we are going to not pass in a predicate, but we're going to pass in some options to our find method. And basically what we're gonna do is that we're going to skip or use offset depends on what terminology you want and a limit and put a limit and basically what this means is that we're telling the database okay just list all of the all of the the emails in this collection and skip until a certain point so basically if this is a one we're going to skip the first document in our database and go to the second one and then we can grab everything from there and then basically what we're saying is that we are putting a limit on how many we want to return so if we put a zero here we're going to get everything if we put a one there we're just going to get a single a single email and 10 is going to return 10 emails and so forth and so forth and then of course we've done like just updated our like these tests here we can just briefly glance over these I think it's the same test there's nothing new apart from like updating the interfaces for listing and just the expected outputs so it's pretty much the same thing all around there 
And we also have a new component which we've, we've added, which is called a utility bar. We'll look at that, in, at that in just a moment. And we also imported that in uh, right under our header section here, which is this bar here. That's basically it. So the inbox has have seen has seen a little bit of an update. We can see that when we're fetching emails here, we are simply we're checking the we are now storing or that we're passing in the path name that we are on, and we are also grabbing the path name from the window object or our location and passing that in together with the email offset into our fetch emails. But let's look as as to why we're actually doing that. So you can see here we have a few updates. So first and foremost, this is what's changed for the most part, where we now have a specified path name and the email offset. So if we have a little bit of a look here at the code here. So fetch emails is now actually getting a little bit sophisticated. And in the future, we might want to improve this a little bit because for now we're making three network requests on every basically every page. And it could probably be this could be composed into a, one single request, but that's a little bit pre-optimization right now. So what we want to do here is that we want, we want to specify an offset, and then we want to check if the last path name is equal to the current path name, because if it is, that means that we are all still on the same page. And the reason why we want to know that is because if I refresh this page now, our current behavior is that we will, or rather, actually, let's go to the end of this list and I refresh it then we, re we reset back to the original page. We could improve this in the future but it's not that important right now. But if I am on this page, on this index where I have the range 10 to 20 and I actually enter one of my emails and I go back, I want to stay on that same index. I want to still stay here. If I didn't check whether or not I was there, I would be resetted back to like the zero, zeroth index. And the same thing goes here because I want to be resetted back to the zeroth index if I change the tab. I want to stay on my current range if I'm st if I'm in the same category, but I want to change it back to zero if I change category. So if I go from inbox to spam now, notice that I reset back to zero to ten, and that's why we want to track where we are actually where, where if we have actually changed the path name because if the path name changes, we want to actually reset ourselves to an offset of zero, so that the pointer that points at the index is reset. That's that's virtually it. And then of course we have fetch emails that has been updated that and then now it now takes an offset in the email limit. We will look at that in just a moment. And yes, basically apart from that, we grab the total email count whenever we go to an inbox, whenever we mount one, so that you know because each inbox is gonna have a different upper range and we need to get that every time we go to the server. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this component, I think. Was there anything else? No, that's virtually it. And then I've added this little config file because there's this value which we basically need in order to to just, you know, we want to set an arbitrary limit. I could change this to anything. I've just hard set this to 10, but we could have it to 50 or whatever. But for now it's just 10 so that we get to play around a little bit with pagination. And we see that we, we can just skim through this. The inbox actions have been updated. So you can see that we have now a set total numbers of email and set last email offset, these sorts of things. We can actually look at that in how that looks in our state just to give a little bit of an illustration of that. Do, 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 do. Let's go to the state and let's go to inbox. And you can see now that we're actually, t we're actually tracking the email offset. So if I go to inbox like that, you'll see that, hey, our total number of emails is 30 because that's the total number we have. And if I click to the left here or to the right here, you see that our email offset is now 10, which means that we are currently showing 10 to 20 email or from 10 to 20. All right. Then let's see here we have, yeah, just some label updates here, nothing special. And then we have the inbox reducer, which is there's quite a lot of boilerplate when you play around with Redux, but it's still, it's still a very good system, I think. So we've added set last email offset and set total number of emails, nothing especially exciting here. 
So the let's actually look at the fetch emails first and foremost, just to kind of illustrate. Note, remember, like previously, we had just a hard coded value that was the inbox email, but now we actually have a, a function. And let's actually look at that function because that's fairly important. So you can see here previously. It was all just these hard-coded values, but now we have a function. Let's actually look at that. So we've updated this, so now it takes an offset and a limit, and then we simply add the offset and the limit into every request. So as we saw earlier, the server can extract these values, and we can dynamically say that, hey, I want the offset to be this, so I can s select everything from 0 up to 10 or 0 up to 100 if I wanted to have that. And this, uh, in my opinion, this is fairly flexible. It's a very, I think, a nice way to implement pagination. There are other ways to do it, but I like this approach. And do, 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 do. let's see here. What else is there to look at? Yeah, we have some updates to these tests here that is, this may not be. So, I mean, all we're really doing here is that we're updating the the fetch email function so that when we give it inbox we also have to pass in the offset and the limit and expect that the outputted string is actually going to be slash inbox emails and then offset and limit to whatever we specify we can just scroll through these it's uh, it's it's not that interesting right and then we have this little function here and basically all it does is that it maps the path name to the email type because when we're actually using this we can actually have a look at this file here let's actually pull that out there and let's see if we can have path name to email type yeah down here so all we're re as we saw earlier here all we're really doing here is that we are grabbing the path name and simply remapping that to an arbitrary value that we understand like a, we just re remap it to uh, to a corresponding email type, which is the thing that the server understands. As we saw on the server, we can actually have a look at this uh, service again here. As you can see, this perfectly maps to the count emails types, the email type here. So it's uh, it's very fairly simple logic. And then we have a look at the Qm Compose email container, which is what we show when we actually show the emails. And basically, the updates here are virtually the same. So We've I've basically just gone through all of the different API end call, endpoint calls and added an offset and the and, and the limit to each of these calls. So each time we call fetch emails, I've simply updated and made sure that there's an offset and a, and a limit. And here is the actual utility bar. So the utility bar is this new component which is going to just have a function called on previous and on next and on previous is going to just call a passed in on previous function with a range start and a passed in path name and on next is going to have a range start as well and the total amount of emails and a path name and then we have basically just a little div with some with some text in strong tags and two icons and this component you're seeing here this is let's close that that's this entire component over here. Right, and let's look at the utility bar container. So here we see that we're passing in the path name and we, we're grabbing a range start, which is this email offset that we've had before, that we saw in the state rather. And then we have the range end. In other words, what we want here is to get the minimum from the range start plus the email limit or the total number of emails so that we can increase for every time we click here but we don't want to go over the threshold of the total so we can we should never you know go beyond the total number of emails we have and then we have on previous here which is just going to get the last email offset and the path name and it's going to basically grab the max from the next offset so basically all it does is that it takes the last email offset and re removes one page or one one set of uh, emails and compares that to to zero so basically this is all it does is that it makes sure that if i'm at zero and i'm trying to go below zero i don't go below zero basically so i can reduce this number all, all the way down to zero and then i simply check what the next email offset is going to be and which one is bigger and i pass that in and set last email and send uh, dispatch this set last email offset and then I have this little convenience function down here. We'll look at that in just a moment. And on next is very similar. The difference here is that there's an upper bound. So instead of having zero as the lower bound, we're just 
looking at it from at it from the other direction. So we are looking at how many total emails we have. So we are going to grab the minimum of the maximum between total email and the total amount of emails minus email limit or zero. So depending on which it is. And then finally, we're going to compare the minimum again of that against this, which is last email plus email limit. So this may sound a little bit complicated, but I see. I hope it feels fairly straightforward what's happening here. We're just making sure that we can't go below zero and that we can't go above the maximum amount of emails we have. And since this one is also using this function here, it's fairly straightforward, I hope. All it does is that it makes the call to the server, parses the data, and sets the emails. And if there's an error, it's going to show the alert. It's very similar to what we've seen in other components. And then we have some basic styling. And finally, as we saw earlier, it's just this, these functions that we, these hard-coded values that are now functions instead. Right, so this is now pagination pretty much supported. So we can actually move that to done. And in the next video, it seems that, yeah, next up is to support searching for different emails. So let's have a look at that.